All right, advanced math A, here we go. We've got lesson 7.1.6, congruence of triangles through rigid transformations. So in the first part of this unit, we've been using side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. So we've used our triangle congruence theorems to prove the triangles are congruent. But what we can do, and what we've kind of touched on already, is we can use transformations to prove things are congruent. Because remember, the transformations that we did, I don't know, what, unit three, like four units ago or so, that uh, the transformations were what we called rigid motions or rigid transformations. And when you have a rigid motion, that means you're moving something, but at the same time, you're preserving the lengths or you're preserving the angles while you're moving it. That means it's making something that's congruent. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at some problems and show how we can move things around in order to show that they're congruent to each other. So on 765, we've got two triangles. And I can see that these two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. So I got side, angle, side, mm, side, angle, side over there. So those two triangles, we would already say from our previous lessons, they are congruent because they follow the side angle side congruence theorem. What we're gonna to do today is try to come up with a transformation to prove that they're gonna be the same. Let me see if I can get the correct one. I think it's this one. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to move this triangle here, this triangle here that is CAB, and I'm going to try to get it on top of this triangle using translations, rotations, and reflections. The first thing that I notice about this is that I've got the red side here and the red side here congruent, the green side here and the green side here congruent, and then these two blue angles there, they look like they're congruent. The first thing that I would suggest that you do when you're doing a transformation is getting one angle on top of another angle, usually using a translation. So in this particular program, I can click down on the middle of the triangle and I can drag it side to side, up and down. But you'll notice that when I move it, the actual triangle is staying in the same orientation, meaning it's still facing the same direction. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to hold it down. Yes, it is moving. So I can go left and right, up and down. But this is a translation because we're not changing the orientation. So I'm going to move these two congruent angles, A and D, on top of each other. All right, so that was my first step. I have moved angle A over to angle E. Now they're on top of each other. Now in order for these two triangles to be congruent, I need to get each angle on top of the other one. So I'm going to do another transformation. The next thing that I'm going to do is a rotation. See how this red side here and this red side here are not congruent yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this one and I'm gonna make my center of rotation the side that's already congruent there. So I'm gonna rotate it. So let's see how I do that. I'm gonna click here, uh, here we go, rotate. So I'm gonna rotate and this is where the center of my rotation is gonna be. So there's the center of rotation. And now see here I can rotate around that one point. So I'm going to rotate until I line up point C and point F. So you see what I've done here is I first translated and got A and E together. And now I've rotated and got C and F together. And now we can see that we can reflect over this line right here, this line that's CF or, or CA or EF. And then what should happen is B should be on top of D. So let's go ahead, and I think this is the reflection one right here. So it's asking me where I want to reflect over. So I want to reflect over that line right there, and now it's reflected over it, and those two triangles are on top of each other. So I've proven that these two triangles are congruent by number one, translating the angles that were congruent, then I rotated to get the side there, and then I reflected it to get the last one. All right, so let's look at our papers real fast. Where is my, there's my cursor. All right, so 
the first thing that I did is I took this point here and this point here, and I moved this triangle until the two angles were on top of each other. Um, I don't know what the actual letters were. I forgot to write them down. So I'm going to call this A, B, and C, and I'm going to call this D, E, and F. So step number one, I translated triangle ABC so that B was on top of F. Okay, so I just take this triangle and I moved it and B was on top of F. So then we had two points, B and F, on top of each other. We need all three pairs of points on top of each other. So the second thing that I did was I rotated, so B is on top of F, and remember I rotated so that A was on top of E, because I want this tick mark side on top of this tick mark side. So step two was I rotated triangle ABC about point F, so that was the center of my rotation. Until point A was on top of point E. All right, so let's go back to it and look real fast and review how we did it. Let's see if I restart it. Ah, see, there you go. All right, so remember, step one, we took this and we translated until A was on top of E. I think I lettered them a little bit different, but we're just going to go with it. All right, so I did that. That was my first step. Step two, remember, was a rotation. So I rotated it, and I want this C on top of the F. So the center of my rotation is down here. I rotate it, and now C is on top of F. And now remember, our last step is we reflect over this red line right there, and then B goes on top of D. So A and D got together in the translation. C and F got together in the rotation. And then B and D are now going to get each next to each other when we do the reflection, when we reflect over that line right there. And now we know they're congruent because they're occupying the same space. So that's how we can prove them congruent. Okay, so that last step was we reflected over this line. I'm going to call it EF. And that gets one of those triangles on top of the other one. All right, so three is the maximum transformations you ever have to do. Translate to get one of the points, rotate to get a second point, reflect to get the third point. Now, you don't always have to do three. Sometimes, like on number 7-66, you're only going to need to do two, and that will be enough. Okay, so let's pull up 7-66. We can see that these are angle side angle and angle side angle. So we know those two triangles are congruent. Let's go ahead and use the E tool. This is found in your textbook. So there's those two triangles. All right, so step one, let's write this on our paper. Um, the green angle and the green angle go together, the blue angle, and the blue angle, and then the red side and the red side. So it's angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So we're just going to pick one of the angles that we know are congruent and put them on top of each other. Uh, let's do the E over to the B. So I'm going to write this down on my paper. Step one, I'm going to translate that 
that top triangle. So what is that? Triangle FED. So triangle FED. So that um, E is on top of B. All right, so I wrote it down. Step one, take this triangle, move it so that point E is on top of point B. Done. All right, so we've done that. So here's my ring. I translated so that triangle FED is on top, so that E is on top of B. All right, now what we see here, now that we've done that, is, you know what, I don't have to probably do a reflection because when I rotate this one, D is going to go on top of A and those two match up. And then F is going to go on top of C and those two match up. So this one's only going to take two transformations. I'm going to click on here to rotate. I'm going to rotate about this these two points here that we already know are congruent. And now I can rotate it. And I'm going to rotate until D is on top of A. And uh, see there? Now the two triangles are on top of each other. So by transformation, we can prove the two triangles are congruent. All right, so our last step, remember, step two is we rotate triangle, what was the triangle? EFD? Yep, or FED or whatever. Triangle FED, we rotated about that point right there, point D, B, yeah, B. So that was the center of our rotation. So that the other points match up. So I did that, boom, let it go, there we go. We've got two congruent triangles because they're on top of each other. Ooh, now I can do, okay, so I'm gonna stop playing. All right, <laughs> next. All right, now let's try to do that without actually um, using the tool. So kind of using our imaginations and see if we can get this to work. So these two triangles look like they're congruent by HL because I've got 90 degrees hypotenuse leg, 90 degrees hypotenuse leg. So these two triangles are definitely congruent by HL. Let's go ahead and label them so that we can talk about them and know what we're talking about. I'll do ABC because I'm very original and then DEF. All right, so our first step is to get points on top of each other that are congruent points. So I would probably start by translating this point B over to point D. Now remember, once we've translated those like that, the top triangle is going to still be facing the wrong direction. Let's just sketch out what this would look like if we did it. So here's D, F, E. Oh, that's really good. He's really good. All right, so here's DFE. Here's the 90 degree angle. We're moving B on top of that. So B would be sitting like this because it has to have the same orientation. Wow, can't draw straight lines. Now remember, this one has two tick marks here. This one has one tick mark. This is two tick marks here, and this is one tick mark. So I've got A up here, B's here, that's also D now, and this is C. All right, so at this point, if I rotate it, it looks like everything's going to be in the correct order because C is going to rotate and then be on top of E. A is going to rotate and be on top of F. So it looks like if I rotate at this point, that everything is going to line up. So I don't need to do three transformations. Two looks like it should work. So my transformations are the first one. We decided we're going to take triangle ABC. 
and translate it. So translate triangle ABC so that B is on top of D. And then our second step, since we didn't have to do three on this one, we decided that we would rotate the top triangle. So rotate triangle ABC about this point right here. So that's going to be the center of a rotation. So we're going to rotate it about uh, point D. Sure. We're going to rotate it about point D until the two triangles match up because that should be all we have to do because C is going to move over to E and A in the rotation would move to F. So until the triangles match up. All right, so this is a, just a different way to prove that the two triangles are congruent. We can use our congruence theorems but if we actually have triangles in space or in a coordinate plane or something like that, it's possible just to prove the triangles are congruent by doing a transformation instead. So it's just another way to prove congruent triangles. That's all I got. 17 minutes. That's pretty good. All right. You guys have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.